That might be the fastest window I've ever seen, by the way. But the rear, whoa! Let it go. That felt better. Dude. Ninety-seven, two thirty, two sixty. Let's say we want to leave the dog in here. All you have to do is tap the accelerator pedal one, two, three times. You can see it turns on. Then I can hit the brake pedal to start, and now automatic shutdown off. It will go till the battery's dead. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Just put a button on here that says, keep climate. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. Thank you to our sponsors for today's video. Nokian Tires, Amber Infi Power, and Star Charge. Nokian Tires is a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made-in-USA all-season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantires.com slash EV. Also, our sponsor, Amber, offers a modern extended warranty for your Tesla's battery and more without the burden of long-term contracts or upfront payments. Check out the link in the description below to browse their plan options and get started with a free over-the-air diagnostic check. InfiPower is the largest EV charger module provider with over 3 million power modules running reliably worldwide. Their latest G2 collection features ultra-high power density and efficiency for EV charging and energy storage integration. InfiPower, innovation for your power. And StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage, as well as microgrid solutions. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome here to the hub and welcome to the GMC Sierra EV Denali Edition 1. Lots of names here going on and well, it's big physically and with the numbers on the spec sheet. Uh, we've done so much on this channel with the Silverado EV, both the work truck version and the RST, towing with them, charging them, driving them across the country. And now finally we have the sister truck to the Silverado EV, the Sierra EV from GMC. I think this one looks awesome. This is the big, bad, every option on this one here. And in this video, I'm gonna take you on a full tour of the Sierra EV and I'm gonna drive it for the first time. Uh, really cool that we're able to do this here at the hub in Colorado. So I'm very much looking forward to this because this truck really appeals to me. You have an over 215 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. You have well over 400 miles of usable highway range. You have close to 400 kilowatt charging. The numbers are huge here and it's just awesome. So I'm ready to take you on a full tour and learn for myself the GMC Sierra Denali EV. You join me and Colton here and dude, we've done a lot with Silverado. We've done yep. cross country trips, towing, and it's just like one everything. It is the approach where you just throw a bunch of batteries in this thing. <laughs> all the batteries. All the batteries, all the weight, 24 inch wheels on this one, just like max everything out. And you know what? It works. I mean, we're big fans of efficiency. We have a Lucid Air over there. We have a Model 3 long range rear drive, which are amazingly efficient vehicles. But when it comes to doing work and doing it with electric, we've spent so much time with Cybertruck and Rivian and F-150 Lightning, and they just fall apart on the range, especially while towing. Very much so, very much so. I think one of the most interesting tests you've done was taking all the Model 3s going basically over the Continental Divide from Denver to Grand Junction, and you could actually see real world usable range over a huge mountain range and right. Sierra, and with all the trucks towing yeah, Model 3s. Silverado EV just smashed everything. Oh my gosh, I was able to go from Denver over the Rocky Mountains, charge once and go back to Denver. It's all the crazy. other trucks had to charge four times minimum, one five times. It's insane. It's another world. I mean, when we're talking about usable electric pickup trucks, and I say this as an owner of a Cybertruck, which I love my Cybertruck, and an owner of my Rivian, and I love my Rivian, this is a truck to do actual work with, without question. <laughs> so. I think, okay, everyone kind of gets that. And, you know, the comments when we posted this today, everyone's excited about this yeah. truck because I think it looks better than the Silverado. Silverado, Alyssa always says, looks like that character Gantu. Gantu. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And it's, got, it's a little bit awkward, but it's like cool. And, you know, certainly with the work trucks are becoming a little bit of 
more popular. We see sure. Colorado Department of Transportation using them on the highways for maintenance. Like it's great to see all of that. And you can even get a small battery in those. Um, but this one's got the big 24 module double stacker. And um, yeah, it's like over 200 kilowatt hour usable, which is just awesome. Insane. And you can't, it's like, you know, in the combustion car world, no replacement for displacement. Yeah. There's no replacement for big ass batteries. Huge batteries, yeah, yeah. it's pretty wild. So, you know, all the, the guys in the comments saying, well, you're killing the planet with all those batteries. It's a truck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Buy a Model 3 to get around town and then have one of these to do actual work. Yeah, exactly. So come on, let's take you guys around. We'll show you on a tour. We've got updated front end compared to Silverado. We'll get into more of the details, but just want everyone to see around this thing. I currently have it parked in high suspension and that's because it's a truck. It doesn't actually seem like it's that high, no. which is pretty interesting because Hummer EV, I mean, that thing just goes to the moon when you lift it all the way up. Yeah, so Hummer EV and this are built on the same basic architecture, but this is the long boy. Very long. Maximum length, and it doesn't nearly have the crazy suspension height that Hummer has. Right. So it's definitely decontented a bit from that. And, um, you know, it is worth noting that GMC was the first brand to debut all of the Ultium stuff with Hummer. That was uh, pretty cool. I mean, it was exciting at the time. We all, you know, love Hummer here at the office. It was such a cool vehicle. But come on, take a look at the bed. It's a huge bed back here. I don't know exactly. It's six foot, six and a half. What do you think, Colton? We yeah, should know this. We should know this. It's definitely smaller than like it's 2500 version when you get, you know, a you big so? diesel. Yeah, it definitely feels a lot bigger than those. Okay, so anyway, looks cool. 10,000 pounds towing, maximum 10% payload. So we're gonna run this in the rustic ring. That'll be soon. great. We have so much testing to do with this. And the nice thing is we have to say a huge thank you to Loveland Buick GMC for loaning us this Sierra. Um, one thing GMC is doing, which I don't necessarily agree with, but it, you know, we, we'll find a way to get the trucks, is they're not really doing much with the media. Really? Uh, on these, yeah, they're not really in press fleets. They mm. didn't, we didn't go to the first drive on it, which is fine, you know, all, all good. Um, but it just means we're able to borrow one from awesome dealer partners of ours here in Colorado. And uh, these guys are the same guys who own Fort Collins Nissan and Fort Collins Kia yep. or Kia Fort Collins. They're all like names are a little <laughs> bit different. For sure. But anyway, they gave us that EV6 GT for six months. We've had an EV9 from them. Uh, maybe we can convince them to let us borrow one of these. Yeah, we definitely need a few of these rolling around. <laughs> and a Hummer EV as well, you know, oh, yeah, just for testing. That, yeah, definitely just for testing. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the mid gate that folds down. That was really cool. And it has some more content than the Silverado. So I think a lot of people are like, is this just a rebadged Silverado EV? The answer is mostly yes. Yeah. However, they do have crab walk and it's got a much nicer interior. Much nicer. That's always what you see going from Chevy to GMC though. This being the Denali, which is always basically their top tier, unless you get Denali Ultimate now on the diesel gas variants. Yeah, this is the big boy, way nicer interior, my impression. Yeah, I mean, they have that new AT4X diesel as well. So cool. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you need a truck to tow more than 12.5, you got to get a diesel. Oh, those or, are pulling. You, you can get a gas. 20,000 pounds yeah. easily. Yeah. All day. I love that. Yeah. So I just need an excuse to tow something <laughs> that way. Oh, we that can much. have plenty of excuses. <laughs> okay, come on. Let's show you guys the inside. Come on down this way. Huge back seat. We're going to go on a full tour of this thing, but Whoa. huge back seat, huge and really nice interior insane leg room. This so, is in your driving position here. Yeah, I'm six foot one or one meter 86, and that's my front seat position right there. Yeah, I Granted, I do fit pretty days. close, but you know. Yeah, I mean, even on Brandon's side, when he was sitting over here, I mean, you still have ample leg room. Yeah, so F-150 Lightning has a pretty big cab. Um, Cybertruck, I feel like, is actually pretty big. Cybertruck's pretty big. Rivian's very small cab. Oh yeah, very much yeah. so. So this is a whole nother ball game. I mean, certainly I think um, you're not really gonna see many people cross shopping these and Rivian would be my impression, just because Rivian is so much smaller, lifestyle truck, even a, a, a bit more premium with much better software and hardware integration. This is just, if you need a truck to do work, here we go. Let's talk price, Colton. Let's run around to the yep. other side because we actually have the window sticker on this. And there's also some model year adaptations for model year 25 that I wanna talk about because uh, I had to do some real digging to figure out what was going on. But first, this is the 2024 edition one. So 2024 is the only year, my understanding, that they'll make the edition one. It's 99495 which makes it about 4500 bucks or $5,000 more than the Silverado RST. Right. 
and similar fashion to what GM has been doing for their trucks, this comes in one specification only, just like Hummer Edition 1. Right. It comes in this color, those wheels, that interior, they're identical, all of them. What's your impression of that? Yeah, I mean, originally, like when Hummer EV came out, it was like, you only see white ones. I do think that's a little boring, but I don't know. It's I seem what's going to happen over time is you'll start seeing these in different colors, which I think is cool. For a first edition, I mean, maybe have like two or three color options, I think. I mean, a lot of people are going to want a black truck or a white truck. I mean, I think you can kind of go in between there. I don't know. I love this. This is how it's I It's a great one. color on this. I wish it had a light color interior, but I don't mind the dark just for being a work truck. Have the dogs sure. thrown in there and other stuff. Yep. That's, that's fine. Uh, and there will be many trims coming of this, just like we've seen Silverado go all the way down to a work truck. Sure. Um, and now they have like base range, extended range, max range. I forget the name of the, the standard range. Maybe that's what they call it. Um, but this will also be available with different battery packs. What I don't know, though, is if they'll do a work truck variant of the Sierra. I don't see why not. They do it with their yeah. combustion ones. And exactly. there are certain you know, fleet operators that go with GMC for everything, go with Chevy sure. for everything. And so you know, there's more probably of a business decision that I'm not totally aware of to make that all happen. So the specs on this thing, Colton, 100 grand, 440 miles of EPA rated range, which is insane. Yep. And I bet it will do just about that on the highway because we've done the Silverado testing. Yeah. So we're gonna mile one of these up and get one with five. We don't really range test cars unless they have 500 miles, sure. unless we really have to test a freshy one, but I try to get you know them broken in and then we'll run this in a range test. That's like one charge. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Just go from 100 to zero on one charge and then it's ready for testing. That's crazy. Yeah, exactly. That um, is wild. That is wild. So, you know, it is the exact opposite approach to Lucid, <laughs> which is yes. put as few batteries in there, make it as efficient as possible. Yep. Uh, and this is this is the exact of all the batteries in it, make it heavy. Everything feels so heavy on this truck. Like just opening the doors and everything just feels so beefy. Well, it is because if you look at the sticker right in here, guys, come on, come on, check this out. Uh, you can see the weights listed on everything right here. And you can see that the curb weight is 8,986 pounds. <laughs> it is a 9,000 pound truck. Yeah. So that means when you put a 10,000 pound trailer on here with a thousand pounds of tongue weight, you have 35 pounds. 35 pounds. Is it? Right, because it's 8986, eight, actually, sorry. So you have uh, 24, no, 14, 14. My math is crazy. Yeah, crazy. I was like, my brain's going, what are you saying? You have 14 pounds of payload. 14 pounds, so you basically can't drive it? You can't drive it. If you put a, a 10,000 pound um, trailer perfect. with a thousand pound tongue weight, <laughs> you have to weigh 14 pounds <laughs> and no luggage. Okay. So I'm not sure how that works. Super Cruise and a baby, does that work? Yes, yeah, it's got Super Cruise, hands-free, all that yeah. great stuff. So, um, and the charging performance I just want to touch on is mega. I mean, absolutely awesome. We all know that the big battery, the double stacker 24 module trucks had some issues charging early on. You would right. pick HVAC on in the Hummers sure. and they would die. Yeah. And my understanding is that's all fixed now. Mm. So it, uh, my friend Tom just did a charging test. If you want to check out State of Charge on YouTube, Tom Malogny's awesome. Yep. He just did a charging test, which we'll do on one of these, of course, as well. Uh, and he said it held 350 kilowatts to 50%. Insane. <laughs> it's just awesome. Wow. And you know, as terms of a C rate on a battery, that's nothing. I mean, right. This is a huge battery. Yeah. It, uh, so then what the heck's going on with 2025? So we've heard the news recently that both Sierra and Silverado get more range for 2025 mm -hmm. when the EPA testing cycle got harder. Sure. And I'm like, how the heck, uh, what's going on? What's happening with this truck? And this is where I think is actually a little bit of a conundrum for buyers. The battery pack stays the same 24 to 25 model year. This is both for Sierra and Silverado. But the 2025 model year trucks, not this one, because this is a 24, uh, come with a new motor or maybe new motors with new magnets, new inverters. There's also aero change to them as well. Maybe like underneath aero plating sure, or whatever to help with coast down efficiency. And it means that they're going to get more range, more efficiency with the same battery pack for next model year. Great. So that means that the first model year of this truck has all the old stuff in it. Yeah. And then 25 gets the new stuff, <laughs> yeah. which is, which is crazy because you can't get the addition one in 25. And so similar to what okay. GMC did with the Hummer is when you want to get all the stuff that this truck has, 
when it's no longer the Edition 1, it's just the Denali, and then you got to get the max range, and now you're over 100 grand. It gets right. more expensive. Sure. So it's not crazy. It's like another three or $4,000 to get an equivalent truck for model year 25. Maybe it's worth it for some, but I would say for most people, this already has so much range and so much charging. For Who sure. cares? Yeah, I mean, pricing is interesting on this too. What is your thoughts on 100 grand or so for this? So much truck for the money. I mean, people say that's expensive, but you go look at a Ford Super Duty, you even look at the AT4Xs, they're a couple thousand dollars less than this or touching a hundred grand or even over that. I mean, trucks are expensive these yeah, days. Yeah, but those are the diesels that can tow way more yep, and are certainly sure. way more useful. For sure. In, in terms of a towing environment than this and can go way farther on a tank. So- Of course. Yeah. Yes. EV trucks are not cheap in general, but I think I paid, you know, Cy Cybertruck now is what, 80 grand? Brandon? 80 for dual and then 100 for for try right okay i paid 120 because i got right. a foundation plus you know taxes and all that stuff and that came with half the battery of this yeah so this is basically cyber beast very much competitor there yeah this is slower doesn't it's not yes. gonna handle as well because it right, weighs for a sure. bunch so you know there's always that trade-off but i think a lot of people want to tow with their electric trucks our audience yeah, absolutely and so the 100 grand doesn't seem that bad to me yeah. So let's go on a tour, shall we? Let's start up here. Let's Heck go yeah. on the front trunk. So come on up. So there's a button right here below the camera that will pop the front trunk open. And you'll see I hit it, there, you'll hear a beep, and then you wait for about two years and then the front <laughs> trunk will open. <laughs> so you can just reach down and boop right there. And it's awesome because it's right in between these slats. Unlike the Silverado that you kind of got to fish around sure. for it. Same with Rivian too. This is just look for the camera and the button's right under there. Same front trunk we've seen in Silverado and Hummer. It's just that, you know, Ultium style. And the 12 volt battery is, I think, under here. It's always good to know where those are, especially yes. on early versions <laughs> yes. of General Motors Ultium vehicles. I think we did that with Silverado EV on the range test. 12 volt died, we had to jump it, all the that The problem is when we do our range tests, we run them till they die, till right. they stop moving. And the Silverado will not restart unless you get it charging from dead above 3%. And yep. that takes a while. We only yeah. needed like a half a percent to get to the <laughs> exactly. charger. So we charged it up a little bit and then, uh, you know, off the port and the truck just freaked out. It wouldn't accept a charge, wouldn't go into gear. Wouldn't turn completely on at all, ripped. yeah. So we had to pull the 12 volt. And so always carry a 10 mil with you. I think the software has gotten better, but that was not long ago. That was only what, six months right. ago? Right. So it's still like, just carry a 10 millimeter wrench, get ready to pull, <laughs> <laughs> you know, reset the truck by doing the, tw the uh, 12 volt reset there. But front trunk's pretty large. You do have a 120 volt outlet right here. It's a NEMA 520. So you can actually pull maybe 16 amps sure. continuous out of this. We'll have to try it out. And you do have the bag, same as the other trucks with the uh, holder in here for a little mobile air compressor and stuff like that. What are those, Colton? I have no idea. What are these two? Not mm. sure. Interesting. This comes with a front license plate mount. And then what's this here, Alyssa? Maybe this is the bag for your EVSE. Yeah, probably here. Yep. Yeah, right. So the dealer would normally, when you buy your truck, this would go inside the bag. But this appears to be a different EVSE than we've seen before. Let's take a look at this. This is a newer, smaller, much more compact. Nice. And it comes with a NEMA 515 and 1450 outlet, which is great. And then here, let's just see, is this 32 amps or did they do more? 30 amps. That's it. Wow. Only 30. That'd take a while oh, no, to charge current... this. Current max 32 amps. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I really wish they did a 40 amp mobile connector, sure. which uh, would have really helped, especially with a battery this big. For example, Lucid gives you a 40 amp mobile yep. connector. Um, but then, you know, like Vin, I'm just looking at what's around here. <laughs> Kia doesn't even give you mobile connectors anymore. So anyway, it is what it is, but most people will probably want to install a level two, you know, home connector in your garage and pretty much all of them are compatible. The ones that I really like recently are the Tesla universal wall connectors. Those are great. Yeah, you have them at your house. I have them at mine. Yeah. They're great. So the, everyone always asks, what do you recommend? I like that because it's got the built-in adapter. You can charge a Tesla, you can charge a, a CCS or J, J plug car and uh, Autel also has some great yeah, stuff. We love those guys. So they're, they're all honestly, don't. I mean, Tom Belogny does the best yes. uh, yes. EDSE reviews. Just find a high quality one with a good warranty. <laughs> okay, and get it professionally installed. That's the biggest thing. If you're gonna, yes. especially with a truck like this, that's gonna sit pulling power for hours and hours on end, you really want a professionally installed right. mobile connector. Coming down the side of this thing, Colton, damn, it's long, it looks good. 
I love the color. I like the side markers here as well. Yep. Well, front and rear, they light up amber when the lights are on. And um, right now it's in the highest ride height. I'm gonna set the truck down to the lowest entry exit ride height. So once the door closes, you'll hear the air purge out the back. There it goes. And Sounds like a bus. Love it. Yeah. And it's <laughs> dropping now. So it's coming down. We haven't seen it in low mode yet. Curious no. to see what it looks like. Yeah, GMC actually recommends launching this in entry exit. <laughs> okay, that's pretty wild. <laughs> Dude, it gets low. Dang, it really does. Yeah, so now getting in and out of it will be much easier. And you can program it when it goes to park that it will kneel. Right, of course. So It's hard on the air suspension though to do that all yeah, the time. I, it's not something I really do mm. on my vehicles. The Rivian offers it. I don't really do that. And I don't know, I think I think it looks good when you juice it up, but I'll set it here to normal ride height, which is how it will probably be most of the time. There's an entry exit, normal, increased, and full height. So now it's raising up to the normal sitting position, which kind of goes rear front, rear front, and works its way up. Not nearly as fast as Cybertruck air system. No, not even close to. Or Rivian, I would say. Rivian's actually a little bit slower, especially when you get super high. Yeah, once you run out of air in yeah, the reserve, then it takes build everything back Rivian. up. Yeah. yeah. So this is the normal, basically resting position for this one. Um, running boards, what's your impression of this? Would you want it a power version, especially on a GMC has been known to do that. What's, what do you think? Well, I think having a powered one would be tricky to mount that underneath the battery. I mean, to yeah. me, it's wild when you look at these on the Ultium platform with such a big battery in there, because they're basically double stacking yes. them. Your floor height to basically down here is just, insane so i do kind of find the truck slightly awkward to get in and out of because i've always said this you get up on a side step and then you have to like dip your head in while your legs are getting in so it's kind of one of those weird things you toss your leg up there or like what do you do yeah. i don't know you feel coming to your own routine exactly. to get yeah. in but it's it's still a truck for sure uh coming back here you'll notice there's no like roof rails or anything right. but i do just want to check Alyssa. maybe i can grab the camera there's no roof mounting solution as far as i can tell huh so it's just a glass panel up here and it is the discolored look like um you know a lot of glass panels are it's possible these pop out for roof mounting but i don't think so i don't think you would want something mounted that far up and uh, you can see the antenna back there but no no roof mount options however you do have of course all of this back here so you can mount a bunch of accessories on here maybe even one thing i would love to see colton is a cab sort of cover that goes from you know molds directly to here all yep. the way to the back and then you can turn this thing into a suburban yeah absolutely especially with that mid gate going down that'd be really cool we were talking about that earlier for the yeah. dogs that'd we'll be fold that amazing down in a minute yeah. yeah i mean a lot of people are gonna look at this and go oh wow cyber trucks is way better this I tonneau is not good it's terrible i don't think people quite understand tonneau covers like i've been around trucks my entire life these are pretty terrible Alyssa actually liked it she's like oh that's kind of convenient i like the ones that basically flip like four times and then you can set it on the back but then you, you get rid of you your rear visibility so except in this truck because unlike we yes. not that this is a cyber truck yes. versus sierra review but it's so dumb that in the cyber truck you can't switch to a digital rear view mirror right this has it yeah look at it right now you can see yeah so you can see the so cameras right it is here. actually using this one though yeah I for your we were, rear view mirror right and then your reverses because yep. yeah. you can see me in there hello yeah, so one of those is for your truck bed another one is for your rear cam yep. you know integration would have been to put those both into one I think. right but they needed different view angles sure um so that's fine let's open up the tonneau here let's show what this thing comes with because i don't think this is an, an a accessory i think the addition one comes with this this so is I'm yeah pull these little tabs here yep it releases it off of this latch we and have this, this does lock too you can't just open it from the side correct yeah and we have uh done this tonneau before when we had the silverado ev on test we had the exact one and it just velcros down the side here right and i think yep that's basically how it goes and then is there a strap or some way to lock it in place i here? think there is yeah. here i can see a little thing but that's okay mess with that later either way take a look at this just awesome to have Big this much space would you mind reaching in and opening up some of those yeah panels right there so we have a you know two more nema 520 outlets another set of two more nema 520 outlets and then a 1030R, I believe that is. Same as F-150 Lightning. I really wish they put a NEMA 1450 yeah, on totally this Yeah, totally agree. You know, just, you know, I got 200 plus kilowatt hours in this truck. Let me pull 
40 amps continuous out of it with a NEMA 1450 outlet, especially for charging other EVs and things like that. They do have another way to export power on this, and it's by plugging into the J1772 port right here, which normally would be you know your 80 amp onboard charger. So this can do 19.2 kilowatt of AC charging, nice. which is great when you have such a big battery pack. And then again, you have your DC charging. I think a lot of people who may not be familiar with the double stacker 24 module here, even the 20 module packs do this as well, is how they can handle charging both on low voltage DC chargers and high voltage DC chargers. So um, when you bring this truck to a Tesla supercharger, nothing will happen. Technically, the truck is like a 350, 380 volt truck 99% of the time. However, when you plug it into a high power charger, like an Electrify America DC charger or EVgo or one of the, you know, basically a thousand volt capable charger, you'll hear a set of contactors go here and it basically wires the pack into a series configuration rather than parallel, doubling the voltage. So it means you can take 500 amps now, but at 650 volts, 700 volts, maybe even 750 volts up top and get way faster charging. However, we all know that the Tesla supercharger network does not support high voltage native charging yet. Version four cabinets have not been installed at the moment. Therefore, the truck will actually not go into high voltage configuration and it will just sit at 500 amps. So it'll pull 200 kilowatts on a supercharger. Which is still pretty good. 200 kilowatts is probably fine for most people most of the time. Certainly the guaranteed reliability of using it is nice. However, the version three cables might overheat pretty quickly. Sure. Because this truck is gonna sit at 500 amps for a long time. Yeah, definitely. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, at least at start you'll be provided or you have to purchase. I can't remember if GM gives you an adapter for free. I don't think they do. Mm. And I think you have to buy the accessory adapter, but this truck is already capable to interface with almost every version three Tesla supercharger out there at the moment. What are we moving around for? You don't like the ding. <laughs> the ding is pretty loud in here. <laughs> okay. For sure. I've done the trick where I've left the truck on. I'll show everyone that little, yes. it's like the dog mode or keep climate mode trick, but it means it will never shut off. So let's talk about this tailgate, mid gate yep. and actual usability. So, First things first, if you put long items in here, you can flip this up. Plywood, whatever. Yep, so you're, I don't know, shit doesn't go flying out the back. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want to put in that's there. That's a great technical term there. Thank you, you've got the million way tailgate. And then that's the trick there, you open both of them at the same time, Right. flip this down, now you have a nice step to get it. They don't have little hand holders like they do on the 2500, 3500s, which is interesting. Yeah, normally that would be kind of... Maybe it actually, I feel like it's supposed to go right yeah, there. Yeah, it could be an accessory. There's huh. holes here for it. Yeah, exactly. It looks like it, yeah. and not on that side. Uh, and this one doesn't have the built-in Bose speaker, but I imagine you can get it. Yeah, for sure. I think sure. it's the same tailgate they use on everything else. So let's close this up really quick. So we'll do this one and then this way. The other thing is you can do is if you have like a ladder or something long, you can just open up the top portion yep. of this and that way you can have it coming out the back and then just put like a little flag on the end. Don't be, you know, unlit. <laughs> Don't be that guy. That. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I really love this function of having, you know, even the high height with this as a stopper. It's just a really nice, we got flies around here. What the heck? I know, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, really nice uh, tailgate solution and they've had this for years. So nothing new here. The funny thing is, so my dad had a, I don't know, it was like a 2021, 2500 AT4. Yeah. When we first saw this, we're like, this is the dumbest thing ever. We're never going to use it. We use this all the time, this multi-function tailgate. It was fantastic for hauling stuff, getting in and out of the bed because they're, they're high trucks. Nice. Uh, you've got the step to get in the rear here as well, the little side step, which is great. You have parking sensors around and we should talk towing stuff because that's why I'm mostly interested in this truck. <laughs> and this is a very selfish review to review it for me, um, which is come on down here. So you have, you know, your normal 10,000 pound. This might even be a little bit more of a hitch. When we do the full towing review, I'll get all the specs on this, but you've got relatively small area to get your towing hooks in here, your uh, recovery hooks. So that's kind of interesting. And normally I would like to see a little bit more space to grab onto. And then when it comes to your hookups, you actually have the camera system for the trailers. So you can go in and have your, you know, in your see-through camera and your reversing camera uh, coming back here when they, they'll they sell you a kit for all of that. And then you've got a seven pin with an integrated brailer, trailer brake control module in the truck. However, when you get the standard version of Silverado, you actually get a four pin up top and the seven pin on the bottom. Okay. So, you would have to, in this case, if you rent a trailer from U-Haul or something that has a four pin, and oh, I think all U-Haul stuff is four pin, 
you would just need a seven to four pin adapter. Okay. Which is not unusual. I think Rivian works that way. Some others. And you did a whole video on that camera system with the trailer. It was pretty cool, right? Yeah, if you're curious on how that all works, check out our Hummer EV yep. rustic ring. We'll run one of these in there too. And sure. we probably won't get all the camera systems hooked up, but we can talk about it from the Hummer system. Yeah, it's a pretty situation. neat system. Yeah. So let's fold the mid gate. So part of this truck is this is not your entire bed length. And I think this is one of the coolest features. So come out on our side, Alyssa, and I'll show you how the heck we do this. So the first things first is we want to pull the bottom cushion up and boom, got your subwoofer right under there, by the way, Bose. It's okay. The sound system. Yeah. It's not amazing. It's not Cybertruck for sure. No, Cybertruck's just incredible. And even the Rivian Meridian system's way better. So then you push in the headrests one, two, this folds down. Then you unhook the glass. Can you see that up there, Alyssa? So you go here and thankfully they put a little stopper so it doesn't go flying. This feels so wrong when you're doing this the first time. Yep. Here we go. And then the glass slides in. Is it in all the way? I Maybe we're, down. I gotta go your way slightly. Uh, what the heck? Oh, oh yeah. it wasn't locked. Yep, there we go. There we go. Nice. And then we hit these little buttons right here to unlatch the centerpiece and this folds down. But before that, well, I'll show you what we can do with the seatbelts. That goes down and then your seatbelts, whoops, go right there. Hey, cool. Hell yeah. Dude, this is the best. Yeah, it's and a big you know, suburban. And tonneau out and you've got yourself the longest freaking bed of any pickup truck on sale. So cool. It's really cool. I love this. There is a downside to the mid gate without question. And that is noise. Road noise, tire noise, wind noise. Yeah. You, we were talking on the way over here. You, you and Brandon were sitting up front. Alyssa and I were in the back seat and we're like, it is pretty darn loud back here. And you guys are like, what? It yeah, sounds we couldn't great hear up here. anything in the front. It yep. was totally quiet, but you can tell slightly something's in the back, but you guys were like hearing cars around us that we weren't. And so just this, all of the openings and closings mean you get these creaks and little things can come sure. through and just noise. And I mean, I think that's the only downside of having the mid gate. And I think if you're never going to use the mid gate, just like put some insulation foam in there. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Get some dynamat yeah. everywhere. But either way, dude, this is just so cool. And from our perspective with big dogs, this is where I kind of want to get the cap. Yeah. And then you've got, you know, the largest enclosed space. You could run an air conditioner off the 240. Yeah. And you have a big Suburban. Roll. Yeah, yeah, it's, you're ready to roll. By the way, they can't come out with a Suburban electric soon enough. Right. The Escalade IQ and IQL are launching very soon, which is, again, same thing underneath, basically. Very much looking forward to those. They're going to be very expensive. And I think most people just want a Tahoe and a Suburban. Yeah, absolutely. You, know, you don't need the big boy Escalade. Uh, okay, cool. So that's uh, Midgate. Let's fold it all up. So we'll go quick here. I can lift this bit up. Boom. Oh, wait, you gotta you actually have to remove the seat yeah. belt. So Big that's slam. In. Then if you come on, maybe if you look from the front seat, Alyssa, we'll get a better view for everyone. Bee bong. How's that looking? Okay, so we'll pop that up, take the glass, boom, and then Boom. It nope. actually goes in pretty quick. It's surprising. <laughs> it's not bad at all. So you pop these up. Dude, it's it's That's really quick. not that bad. It's, it, not it's bad. definitely not a one person job. I think you could probably finagle the glass out of there. That'd be the only weird thing to do on your own. Yeah, you may just have to pop in so you can grab sure. both sides. Yeah. The last thing you want to do is drop this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know, heated rear seats, which is great. I think we should do the back seat review. So I'm going to hop in here and Dude, holy smoke. It's so comfy back here. Room for days. So I can completely lounge out. I've got heated rear seats with three levels on each side. I think the one miss in this truck is really the rear HVAC. Yes, very much so. There's just two vents. I can show everyone from my perspective here. There's just two vents here, which is kind of annoying, but you do have a little storage cubby, which is great. And then you also have a power outlet and USB-Cs. But this as your only HVAC for the rear, Mm, kind yeah. of lame. It's also weird you don't even have any control of the HVAC back here at all. Yeah, there's no uh, tri-zone. Right. So there's no separate fan speed or temperature for back here. The only options you have in the front when you go to the climate is just to adjust which vents the air comes out of. I'd say that's a slight bit of a miss. 
to be honest. No, oh, totally a miss. Hummer EV, same thing. I mean, yeah, the reason definitely. we don't have a Hummer EV right now is because this one requires rear air vents for the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> And at least here, we would be able to plug in an air conditioner or something sure. to the power outlet. Here, I'll hand you that back. But uh, that's the main that's the main issue with the truck. Other than that, you've got this nice center armrest, cup holders, and you know, for humans, I think this is fine to have this kind of vent. Um, but there's still no dog mode in the vehicle. There's no like official climate keep. You right. have to keep the thing running, which means anyone can kind of get in and take it. Yeah in order to leave climate on. So I wouldn't want to do that in a, you know, urban sketchy environment as an example. Totally agree. Yeah. If you're out in the country, I don't think no any problem. cowboy wants an electric truck. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. No, no issues there. Um, anything on the door card? The door card's really nice. You have perforations yeah. in the side. I can uh, grab this and show everyone. So perforated up here. I would say this is a little plasticky up here, just in my impression, not the greatest, but like all the materials down here, touch points are pretty good leather in here i really like these speaker grills they look quite nice yeah plenty of storage down here this is all very plasticky but i mean this is really any truck these days that you're getting unless you're getting rivian cyber truck i think like f-150 probably has some plastic down here but yeah it's made to be used too i mean it's a hundred grand and you got to think the battery's got to be a huge portion of that. i can't even imagine what these batteries cost so it's like you get a you get a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack with a steering wheel and it comes with an interior yeah it's incredible <laughs> and paint on the outside yeah so i think it's a it's a good deal no matter which way you uh string it um Alyssa, I'll, give, I'll let you give your initial front seat review here in a moment, but I just wanted to show rear cup holders. When we get up front, there's so much storage in here, and the view with this glass roof is phenomenal. Yeah. It is a fixed piece of glass. I don't believe you can dim this in any way. It's just a piece of glass, but it does seem to have good IR rejection and UV rejection. It's definitely stuff. very tinted. That's one thing I'd like to see in these more. I mean, Rivian just moved to this using electrochromatic glass up here. Makes a big difference because what you do, like I know Brandon has a shade that he puts over it or you just plop something up there, but then you don't really get all the natural light inside, which makes the cockpit feel a lot more roomy and a lot more pleasant to be in, in all honesty. Yeah, and I think we should comment as well, just compared to Silverado, just how nice this interior looks. You've got that Denali badging right over here. You've got the nice air vents, this huge central screen and overall it's just a much more visually attractive and higher quality feeling yeah nicer materials than the silverado and for an extra five grand i think it's totally worth it let alone just for the crab walk feature you can't get that on a silverado but this crab walk crab walk is awesome so why would you even consider a silverado probably wouldn't <laughs> just kidding. no yeah. they're still nice trucks but yeah, you yeah. definitely feel that the gmc and this is always how they do it they're always slightly nicer especially when you get into denali versions of everything i mean you just look at the stitching here like this is actually pretty darn nice yeah dude i mean they know what they're doing here. yeah of they, course they, they got this sort of dialed in i think um you know when it comes to other trim levels we're comparing in our heads rst to the denali right. edition one when you get to trail boss when you get to at4 when you get to others they might actually come a bit closer yeah exactly um, and and the materials might be dead on and so plenty of videos to make yes going on we also have some friends shout out to my friend nebula who is a uh you know probably going to comment on this video he's a gm expert cool. so um you know i'd love to get him on a podcast or something and talk about all those differences and you know, we, we are, um, this is the start of a lot of Ultium coverage coming up. We're doing Blazer, uh, Prologue, ZDX, Equinox, <laughs> this thing, Cadillac Vistic coming up soon, which hasn't even been announced really yet. We're filming that in a bit. I've like, never heard of that. So cool. Yeah. So we've got a bunch of GM stuff coming. So this is, we've got to get back into the groove yes. on the nerd stuff because forgive us if we're missing anything, but I think we're getting most of it here. So I'm going to hand the mic off to Alyssa at the moment and let her share some of her interior impressions. Uh, I think the interior is very nice. Um, I like that there is buttons here. So if you are actually a, a working person and you have gloves on, you can still do these controls. Um, the cameras I've been checking out, a lot of good angles still like mid potato like not a full potato <laughs> but just a mid potato um but decent much better than some other cars and uh yeah interior wise i think it it like wants to be premium but it's not quite there like it's not i wouldn't say the top trim that you could get in a truck like this so what makes you feel that way 
Maybe I don't know. It, like yeah, stuff. yeah, it's yeah. the plasticky stuff, and then it's like really nice, le like pleather, leather, whatever it is, and then. Well, the headliner too. Yeah, and that. Yeah, the head. Yeah, headliners. I don't know. It's just like it's almost really premium, but they didn't quite take it that extra mile, in my opinion. But it's a truck. It's a truck. <laughs> but there's a lot of really nice trucks out there that nice do too. have. Yeah, that do have all really nice features and all that stuff, but. Yeah, it's just like little things, like these nasty, I, I can't stand when they're yellow like that, but um, other than that, I think it's good. So I mean, for a work truck. truck. Oh yeah, I would drive this truck. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I like it. I mean, I think when I was sitting in it, the only thing I could think of, I think it's a good happy medium of everything. There's still some things that are missing when it comes to the uh, Hummer EV in this, but this definitely is a more practical, usable, ridiculous version of a truck. So it's dinging right now because it's looking for this, which is the key. So let's show everyone that. You got the GMC badge on the back, lock, unlock, remote start, and tailgate and frunk. It's still going to ding. Now it's mad that the tailgate's open. <laughs> it's still missing <laughs> key. Missing, check for key. It's in there. Uh, yeah, no phone is a key, by the way. Ooh, that's kind of yeah, lame. Yeah, there's not a lot of app features, which I already asked about, because there is a way to hack a dog mode, but you still can't see what the temperatures are but i would just suggest getting um one of the temperature monitors uh like a waggle or marcel is the one that i've been using uh both are really good i think the marcel is a little bit more intricate in my opinion um a little bit more accurate but uh, i haven't thoroughly tested all of them uh but i have had experience with both of those can you hand the mic to brandon let's get his impressions brandon you well you can't hear me but sarah what you think about the trust I mean, it feels like a regular truck, and I think that's what people would like, is that it doesn't have to feel like an electric truck. It can look and feel like a regular truck, but it can be electric. So I think it's a good direction to go. Yeah, so in comparison to Cybertruck, obviously you've done a lot. You've driven across the country with me in Cybertruck. Um, this just seems to have so much more usability in terms of range and yeah. charging. Um, what's your impression on maybe who would go for a Rivian or Cybertruck versus something like this? Well, I know my own dad would probably never buy a Cybertruck. Like, I asked if he would buy a Cybertruck. He said, maybe a Rivian. But then I sent him a picture of this, and he was, like, all over it. So, definitely, like, fits the mo like the average truck buyer. You want a truck that, you know, looks pretty good. And also, you don't like sacrificing looks just because it's electric. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it is, um, you know, it's not screaming that it's anything weird or unusual. You yeah. can definitely tell there's like, you know, no major grill up here or anything, but it's not offensive. It definitely looks okay. So if you can hand that back to Colton, that'd be great. Thank you for the insight. Appreciate it. Uh, Colton, let's jump up front and go through some software menus and all this good stuff. Cool. Time to jump in the front seat on the way in. Man, this thing has a nice looking interior, Colton. Yeah, I really like it actually very spacious too yep totally agree and i love the digital rear view here you've got you know your onstar sos hazards all that good stuff right there this is where i think you could get a nice electrochromatic switch yeah exactly for the roof but um okay let's run through what the heck we have going on here so you've got uh, two memory positions with an exit mode you've got front and rear windows dude this is a hundred thousand dollar truck only the front two windows are automatic. Ooh, that's kind of So the rears are auto down. That might be the fastest window I've ever seen, by the way. And then the rear, you have to hold the switch. What yeah, on yeah, earth? I like that. <laughs> How is that? But dude, the rear switch. So the front windows are like pretty slow. slow, but the rear, whoa. <laughs> can I drop? You can feel it like once it hits the bottom and like the whole truck kind of moves. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. But yeah, the front single pane glass everywhere. And it does have some natural light, uh, you know, rejection in there, I think. Sure. But I always tint all the stuff. So just get that nice ceramic tint in the truck. You're not a fan of tint? Uh, not really, no. You like fish bullet. <laughs> I like privacy glass. And then like, because I don't like distortion in windows, especially you always tint your front windows and it drives yeah. my eyes nuts at night. Oh, but I, I, doesn't bother me. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> so you've got these little vents down here. Kind of strange. Yeah, so your kneecap coolers, kneecap, or uh, I don't know <laughs> that area. Cooler. That area <laughs> never going to be sweating down there. That's always great. And then you've got your uh, big air vents right up here. So air vents for days up front, and you've even got the little side window ones from yep. up here. But they totally forgot about the rear passengers. Mm -hmm. That's pretty GM. 
in my opinion. It's all, I mean, Hummer EV was the same way. Really? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's a good point. Absolutely. Yeah. And then you've got this nice steering wheel, smooth grain leather. Love the love the shape, love the design, love the thickness, love the super cruise here up in the middle. It always just feels good even when you're driving manually to have the little super cruise gloss mm. uh, right there. I always think and it also because it has such a slow steering ratio, you're always cranking this thing. <laughs> yeah, doing this all the time. If there's another vehicle that really needs steer by wire, it's this. Yeah, this would be amazing with Cybertruck steer by wire. Oh my gosh. That is kind of like one of the best features of Cybertruck. For and me especially, I absolutely love it. Yeah, because you're, you're rocking with one hand. Yeah, and it's just, boom, I'm full full lock. Like, yeah. it's amazing for me. Yeah, and this, you're just like, whoa, and then yeah. you got to go back the it's other like way. It's like wax on, wax off, you know? But it oh. does have an incredible turning radius, really which does. we'll get into. And then you have your, your main instrument cluster here. Forgive us for having some of the plastic on the screens, but it's just because this is a brand new truck with 39 miles on it. We've put <laughs> most of those on today yep. already. Already. And we just don't, you know, if someone buys this truck, it is for sale at Fort Collins GMC. Oh no, Loveland GMC. But uh, don't, don't, not the Fort Collins one, the Loveland one. Yes, yes. And um, yeah, they're cool. Uh, we just didn't want to ruin it. So you have this progressive regen panel. So you can like say, I want more, 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 more until you reach max out. But it also has the crazy one pedal driving that Silverado has. And nuts. so much regen, almost 400 kilowatt regen in this thing. Coming off the highway up here, is, it literally felt like Kyle just went break to the floor almost like it was just like whoa and you can adjust all the settings but i had it dialed all the way up uh so this is totally configurable the first thing is you have your main display view so you've got your sort of powertrain thing maybe i need to clear the tailgate open menu then it will let me yes you've got your map view that will load up here with google maps that's pretty nice very nice and it has great route planning which we'll show everyone you have your driver assistance view, which again, hands-free Super Cruise. The main issue with Super Cruise though, it only works on pre-mapped highways, which is such a bummer. Very weird coming up here, it would like work for seven feet and then turn off. And then it worked for like a minute, minute and a half, and then turn back off. Yeah, our area here, the highway was recently removed. And so they need to come and remap it because Rivian, Lucid, and this all struggle. Yeah, very much so. Um, okay. And then you go back to your main thing. You can actually load up different menus here on the display. For example, if I wanted to load up my trip computer, I can come into this menu as it loads the trip computer. Oh my goodness. And then I can come here, for example, trip information and say, add to driver display. And then you'll see it right there. 1.1 miles per kilowatt hour, but we were driving it a bit crazy. Let's be honest, but still, holy smokes. <laughs> It's just a thing with this. It, we're used to it with these by now, but I know the viewers are like, what? Well, okay. If you drive it normally, you'll get much better efficiency, but we were romping on it. Yeah. Um, so that is uh, not unusual. You can see two miles per kilowatt hour on the current trip, which we've traveled zero miles. So the EPA rating is technically two miles per kilowatt hour. That's what that is telling me. Okay. That's exactly what I get in my Rivian. That's yeah, right. a little bit less than Cybertruck. I mean, a lot of it less. Cybertruck's like almost three miles per kilowatt hour if you drive it slow, like 2.2 to 2.5 on the highway. And um, yeah, I mean, this is a bigger, heavier truck. So sure. what do you expect? It's not efficient. We are we have been through there, but they've compensated with battery pack massivity, if that's a word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's this screen. It's pretty okay. I wish it was brighter. I wish it was more configurable. You also have this awesome head-up display in here that will give you all the driver assistance and your maybe navigation as well. Uh, all right up there. And that's really awesome that it's totally configurable. Down here, you have your parking brake, which clamps on. Normally when you put the truck in park, it actually uses the parking paws. Mm -hmm. So it has a physical park lock on the front and rear motor, which is great for towing, you know, so it doesn't sound like Cybertruck. If you park it on a hill with a trailer, it throws a warning. We've did it, done it in our rustic mm -hmm. ring and it'll be like, dude, I can't hold this thing. I'm going to roll back. Wow. So here you've got the physical park locks, but every time you put it in park, it rocks. Yeah, it was like four times when we went to Starbucks earlier. It's yeah, it's just so like, yeah. unpremium. Yeah. And so I wish they would just rip on the parking brake every time first, which is like what Audi does. I think if you park it on an incline, it will do that, hmm. but not on flat ground, which it should do it every time. Right. I think. Um, anyway, then you have your suspension height adjustment down here. So you can go again, everything from entry, exit, normal, increased and maximum. We'll just keep it in normal for now. You have your front trunk and your rear, rear tailgate and a light output plus your trailer uh, gain control. So you can go 
gain in 0.5 increments. We've talked a lot about this with Silverado and then I can squeeze here to have some manual control, which is a really great feature that, you know, if you just need to get a little break on the trailer, got a little sway, just want to calm it down or something, you can just whoop, squeeze right down there and you have a complete variable control, which is much nicer than the other electric pickup trucks. Um, I'm thinking Cybertruck and Rivian where you just have an on off to max gain. Right. Yeah. That, I mean, we use that all the time when towing, mm -hmm. it's especially nice. here in the mountains. Yeah, very much so. Steering wheel controls, all your super cruise and other stuff is here on the left side. And then you have your sort of volume call, uh, next track stuff over here and a heated steering wheel. Of course, on the back side, there are buttons to go volume up and down and track forward and back. I'm going to hand this to you, Colton. Okay. Cause now we're going to go through before we get into that software, this, which <laughs> there's so much going on in here. First and most important, massive center console. They could fit another 200 kilowatt hours inside of here. <laughs> You've got a USB-C right there, which is cool, and a little light back here, but just a massive storage cubby. Then you can slide the cup holders back and it reveals another cubby up here. And if you want more space, you can push the wireless phone charger away and it reveals two more USB ports and another you know, massive cubby that goes all the way up. So you've got your 12 volt right here, two more USB-Cs, and then this little tray that can slide in right there, which is, I think, pretty cool. And you can cover all this up nicely like such. Feels very Model 3. Yeah, it does feel very Model 3, but I think- Not in a bad way. Yeah, I think it's pretty sweet that you can do all this. You can lock them in, love this center console. You also have a little uh, paper holder or something here on the side where you can just put a couple things. Have we put a phone on there to see if it actually does charge? It, it does, yeah, okay. I charge my phone on there. Cool, that's neat. Glove box check. Uh, I got the hand, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got bolts, what the heck? Uh, those are TPMS sensors yeah. on there. Yeah, they uh, are. Those are for the trailers. Oh, you could put these in the trailer. Yep. How about that? So then you can, when you're towing all the time, you can see, make sure that those are all good, which is cool. That's a nice feature. Discover what you love, Sirius XM. I don't, because I don't give good audio quality. <laughs> They tell you how to turn it on and off, which is a great actually point that I should bring up. There's no power button in this vehicle as an electric car should not have. You just get in, put your foot on the brake, it turns on, put it in gear and go. When, when you're done, you put it in park, you exit the vehicle and then it shuts off. Just too many beeps and bongs though. Lots of beeps and bongs. If you, for whatever reason, want to force the truck off, you can come down here and hit this off and then power the vehicle off. Mm. And enough. if you wanted to leave it on forever, so you can see I get out, the truck shuts off, tells you 65% state of charge. Um, if you wanted to leave the truck on for like a dog mode, this is the trick that we keep talking about. And every GM product works this way, by the way, um, because you can see it's off. Let's say we want to leave the dog in here. All you have to do is tap the accelerator pedal one, two, three times. You can see it turns on. Then I can hit the brake pedal to start and now automatic shutdown off, it will go till the battery's dead. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Just put a button on here that says, keep climate. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, exactly. And then I guess the question is, if I take the key, can someone steal it? So Alyssa, can you climb up front and see if you can steal it? So I have the key, not in the truck. See if you can move it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> and it even so, says key missing, check for key. So that's the issue, I think. Wow. They really need a keep climate mode that keeps driver rail off because anyone could just come and smash through your glass roof or your window. Or just literally open the door. I think I can lock it can actually. You? So let's just see really quick. One, two, three, brake. It's gonna say, hopefully it's not Automatic drive Automatic shut down off. Locking it. I'm going to put the key on the EB6. Okay. So key is far away. <laughs> now I'm running. I can't ah, okay. come in. So at least that's it good. stays locked. That's good. At least. Okay, great. So that's, that's good. And then I can click unlock on the key truck unlocks coming back to it and boom. Okay. So that, that makes me a little more At least there's a way. Unlike the new Volkswagen ID buzz, there is no way to keep climbing on for more than 30 minutes. Yeah, lame. Lame. So at least there's a workaround. I use this feature to drain them overnight because oh. it takes forever to drain the batteries. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so I'll do max AC on one side, max heat, park it for charging tests. Okay, so that's all that. I actually like getting in and out of the truck. Yeah. 
I'm kind of into it now. It doesn't bother me. We've got a lot of software stuff to get into. And I think, oh, Alyssa, do you want to do it for the purpose of this video? I think the viewers won't mind. Get up here, Alyssa. Nice. Oh, oh she's don't going do that ball. one. Don't do that one. We'll <laughs> <laughs> Leave that open. We're going to put it back on just we'll for the some dog hair on there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just put it up there for story. There you go. <laughs> but this will look way better on camera, yes, I think. Yes, very much so. Okay, so the first things first is you have your home button, which brings up all of these apps. So the nice thing is this is running on Android Automotive. You can download more apps from the Google Play Store when you're signed in. So you can download Spotify, which is the main I care about. I think you can get YouTube as well mm. and a few others. So vehicle status. This is, now that it's already been then in there, it loaded up pretty quickly way quicker we have energy efficiency <laughs> two miles per kilowatt hour that's the rated we have energy use we burned 1.9 kilowatt hours just sitting here and we have tire pressures we should mention 68 psi in the rear and 62 up front i think it was 64 61 oh wow yeah that's 61 insane. front and 68 in the rear is what it's supposed to be and of course you can again add that to the driver display so you can somewhat configure this. What uh, do you think display. about that implementation rather than just having everything over there and then scrolling through it? I much prefer scrolling through. Yeah, exactly. Cause yeah. this just, you gotta go menus deep to get what you want. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, uh, but you do have cool energy info. So it tells you, you know, what's taking up the energy consumption of your drive. Uh, and you can of course add that to the driver's display. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you, it's like, yeah, a pain to do it this way. But anyway, you've got some cool info in here bring back the menu. You've got your drive modes. So you've got normal, you've got off-road and tow haul, but then you also have this towing menu that you can set up your trailer profile. Now we'll get into this when we do the rustic ring. This is where you set up your cameras, your length of the trailer, and uh, you can super cruise while towing, which is really cool. And yeah, love, love all of those features, but we're not going to get into it much on this video. This is your one pedal drive on and off quick setting. However, there are also mm. off, normal, and high. And on top of all of those settings, you also have the regen pedal here. So right. some people might choose to drive with it off. When you hit the brake pedal, it will use regen until you can't. So there's not much of an efficiency difference between all of these. And then you can just squeeze on the uh, regen paddle or the brake pedal. We'll just give you max regen until it gives up and then switch to friction brakes. And we'll keep that on. I think normal feels the most natural high is like pretty aggressive so i'm friends with some of the engineers of this truck like i see them at events and stuff and they're just totally like how could you not drive it in high all the time and i'm like okay i get that but i think a lot of people switching to electric this is really extreme it is and definitely even coming from electric car to electric car i mean it doesn't feel the most natural in my opinion it's a little bit jerky yeah if you i think will. the issue is the pedal's too light Sure. Yep. And so I think if they put a stiffer pedal in here, it would be easier to modulate it. Mm, yep. So I think that's more the issue rather than the implementation. Um, the other thing I should mention is if you're in high or normal, you will get the same one pedal driving experience, even if it's not regening. So if you're at a hundred percent state of charge where it can't take any more energy or the battery's frozen and you can't charge it, you'll still get the same one pedal drive. It just uses the friction brakes. Nice. I think that's, you know, Tesla has that option, you know, to mm -hmm. use friction brakes when regenerative braking is limited. Uh, I wish there was an option to turn it off because how I like to drive a lot of times is just use the maximum regen and then I'll just drive around that limitation. So I'm not wasting energy by using friction brakes. Sure. Just a nerd thing. My mode lets you configure by hitting this little pencil here, how you want it to be. And this is sort of the workaround to creating a sport mode. Um, a pair, I was talking to the engineers about this when I was on the Silverado launch and they're like, the legal department in the truck division wouldn't let them put a sport mode on because <laughs> it didn't fit with the brand ethos. And they're like, we built this insane truck. Let us do a sport mode. So the only way to do that is to actually do it through the my mode. Hmm. So this is the workaround. And so you can go steering however you want it to feel. You can go suspension sport. That's the only way to stiff it up. You can go acceleration feel maximum motor sound. You can go all the way from normal sport and off how we typically drive. And so that's the way to create your sport mode, but they wouldn't let them get the toggle. But you have Thor's hammer. So this, which is the sort of the boost mode, if you will, you have to select it and then it forces the sound on, which is annoying. And then it gives you the full power while driving. Right. 
I would almost never use it because of the forced motor sound that they pump in, all the fake noise. If they would let me do this and turn off the motor sound, then I'd be very happy. Sound equals power, you know. So like in the Silverado, it's called Wow Wide Open Watts. I don't know what they call it in this. It, there is a name. Hmm. It's a mar and I looked it up earlier, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> but anyway, that's to give you the, the full power. So you've got Google Assistant, you've got your Play Store. This is where you can download, you know, when you sign into it, your Spotify and other apps and stuff like that. You've got your charging menu and you can see Fort Collins, or no, sorry, Loveland GMC uh, has it already set to 80%. So they already know, which is cool. And you can set it all the way up to 100 or all the way down to 50%, even though it lets you drag. 220 more. miles at 50%. That's yep. amazing. And then 440 at 100. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's pretty wild. So you really, you know, for longevity, cells don't like to be that high all the time. This is definitely a truck for like 99% of your driving. You can just charge it to 50 every day. Oh, easily. And then, you know, when you're towing, when you're going on that trip or whatever, you paid for the battery, use it. But you just don't want to abuse it by letting it sit up too high for all the time. You can do a little menu as well, so you can set it to start charging um, based off of your uh, electricity rates, or you can even set a preconditioning time and temperature, which is cool. What else do we have? Schedule, charge assist, all that stuff. It does support uh, Tesla supercharging, of course, but you do have to activate in the app. I don't think it supports plug-in charge hmm. with Tesla at the moment, maybe in the future. Cameras, Alyssa already showed us some of these camera views, the potato quality sort of semi-potato quality. They're not great, Colton. No, they're really not. But 360 cam is nice to have. I think that's a very useful feature. Um, you know, we just got an EV9 and that is my wife's new favorite feature. And she parks very straight in a parking spot now. Okay, unlike how I parked this one. Yeah, well, that's what you're supposed to do with the truck this big, right? <laughs> right, you've got Alexa, which I have no use for. And then you have trailering. We've already shown you that menu. A couple extra settings in here that could be interesting for you guys audio settings um, there is like sort of a three channel equalizer nothing crazy sound system like we mentioned is is serviceable it's okay but it's not nearly at the level of Cybertruck no nope. or even uh, you know the B&O and the lightning is pretty good as well right so definitely not up there um, Super Cruise will do automatic lane changes you've got some climate stuff the one thing I always recommend to do on GMs is set the auto fan speed to low because every time you get in and it's slightly warm out it yeah just and, ripping. Yeah. It's just, you're <laughs> never going to get hot in a GM air conditioning vehicle. They have the best air conditioning out of anyone. So that's a bold statement. It's true. They've always had the best and we have eco climate on, but we probably don't need it because we have over 200 kilowatt hours to play with. <laughs> no eco mode in this. Come yeah. On. And you can tell the fan actually just kicked up a yeah. little bit. Like what was that? How much extra range was that going to save us? <laughs> <laughs> um, you've got collision stuff, lighting. I mean, all of this is same from the, um, Oh, service mode. Service mode for the suspension. That's like if you jack it up, yep. it won't try and compensate. So same as Silverado. A lot of that is in there it would be the same. Your climate menu, there's also a hot key to get there from here. And this is mostly just temperature. Where do you want the air to go? And a lot of it can be controlled with the hot keys already. And I do like how they let you turn off AC and heat completely. And you can just let fresh air come in. Again, it's probably not going to save you that much range on something that has this much capacity, but if you're really stretching it, which we do sometimes, never a bad thing. And in the rear, you really can only choose where the air comes out of, which I really wish there was a tri-zone yep. climate. That's a big miss. The, the, the Actually, probably the number one miss for us on this truck is the rear HVAC. I think we've talked about audio quite a bit. You'll get some different um, you know, input options, FM, AM, Sirius, Bluetooth, USB, and then, of course, downloadable ones like Google Podcasts or Spotify. And no CarPlay. No CarPlay, no Android Auto, as far as we can tell. Doesn't bother me one bit. I don't like CarPlay at all. Yeah, I, the, the comment section just got so angry with us. But, yeah. <laughs> you have a quick control menu that can be optioned uh, by actually coming to this right here. And you've got your head-up display setting. You can turn the lights on inside the truck. Basic functions, front fog lights, as an example. And this is where you access your crab walk. It's so much easier to turn on than Hummer EV. Yeah, Hummer EV, you got to push the button for a certain amount of time, wait for the thing to complete. And if you miss it, then Here you it's to just restart it. Boom. Yeah, that's, that's it. how it should be. Nice. Oh, yeah. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Coolest thing on the planet. So that's neat. And then you can, of course, do rear steering off or on. And we love rear steer. Makes this truck more maneuverable than... Very you know, much so. Than anything except Cybertruck. Yeah. 
Yeah, Cybertruck's way nicer with the steer by wire. Totally agree. Okay, uh, map check. We're going to do a little route planning. So we, we aren't signed in, so we actually have to go through this menu every time we go to the map but a normal user would never. We're gonna type in uh, Las Vegas, which is our typical route that we check when we're here and see how quickly it can do the route planning. So, boom. Let's let it think and- That's quick. Well, there we go. Now it's got the chargers. That's quick. I don't think I would trust this perfectly. It wants to do th four charging stops. I think I would do it in three because yeah. it does get you to the chargers at pretty high state of charge. I mean, theoretically you can do this in one stop. One stop. But you can see it's getting us there at 20%, 13%, 25%. percent what us uh, let's get down to 1%. 46 minute charge in Edwards, huh? To yeah. get to Green River. That seems excessive. Yeah, but Edwards to Green River is far. That's true, actually, yeah. Yeah, so I think they, they're just like, juice it. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there's a bunch of you know, different options and ways that you can take. It's a super snappy system, beautiful display. I, I really don't have many issues with this. No one's really gonna get hung up using this system, but you can always optimize better than the route plan. The one thing that it's really missing, I think that uh, a lot of other electric vehicles offer like BMW and Mercedes and Porsche is the ability to set your arrival state of charge at the charger and the destination. Mm -hmm. So I can say, get me to chargers at 3% and get me to my destination, which may not have charging at 20%. Yep. And then you just let it do its thing. So this definitely needs some work. There are some settings in here when you go to EV, uh, I, don't have, I haven't seen it in this truck, but you can set your arrival in certain Google based systems, but not your chargers, state mm. of charge desired. I think that's mostly everything that's going on here. You've got some hotkeys that you could probably program down here, your climate control, which you have you know, a physical button and a switch that can operate. So if you have gloves on, that's really nice. Um, for most of your functions for climate control, you have this built-in volume knob, which is a really nice. Feels great. Yeah, it feels great, looks cool, has this ring of sound that comes around the outside. You guys can see that. Yeah, that's really cool. No complaints there. I think it's time to drive it. Probably. I think it's been like well over an hour. Yep. We should probably just take it for a little cruise. There's going to probably be not much to talk about because um, we've already driven drives just like the Silverado. But uh, yeah, let's go out and talk a little bit about driving. Well, guys, time to drive this thing. Hell yeah, big boy truck. I love it. So to get into gear, foot on the brake, you pull this back and go down just like every other GM product that we've been in. And we've got a lot of steering lock to work with. Uh, and also a great turning circle to work with as well. With the rear steer, really nice. I also like how I don't necessarily have to put my foot on the brake to change direction. Not a shout out to Kia. They do that no. terribly. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's been driving me nuts in my cars lately. <laughs> so this, you can kind of like Holy rock it. Regen. Yeah, regen's crazy, but you can see I can just go forward, reverse, and the, the drivetrain is so stout that there's no cogging, there's no yeah. you know weird bucking or anything. It's, it's actually pretty good. We're all locked up here, so let's go for a cruise. The first thing first, is I'm gonna put this thing into just normal drive mode, which is how probably most people will drive it, and we'll turn off the maximum power thing. So let's just go for a nice little cruise around. Great visibility out of the truck, by the way. There is blind spot monitoring in the side view mirrors, but I just have great visibility, and it doesn't even really feel that huge because of the rear steer. Yeah, totally agree. The steering ratio is a bit too slow, in my opinion. I really wish they could tighten this up, but talking to the engineers, they did it for stability while towing, mm. which is something we've complained about towing with the Cybertruck, having a really quick ratio. So it kind of makes a little bit of sense, but still like there's not much going on here yeah. off center. Like I really would like to see a snappier. It's gotta move that weight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, we have 9,000 pounds to work yeah. with. We went around one corner, you can already see the tires, right? So it's like, damn, <laughs> it's yeah. just a lot of force here. Oh, Auto sure. that we're working with. Uh, the nice thing is with one pedal driving on, I mean, you can lift off completely. This is all regen off throttle, 170 kilowatt regen right there at low speed. And it'll bring us right to a stop perfectly. Very smooth too, at the bottom. Absolutely. I mean, they really know what they're doing with this kind of stuff. And once you kind of get tuned into driving it, you get pretty good with the, with the high regen setting, I yeah. would say. So in terms of smoothness, we've got a little bit of a train track situation. I think we just flattened them. So sorry to the trains. <laughs> and power's good too. I can put my foot down and it definitely gets up and boogies right there. No yep. question. The uh, main issue with this truck when you're really hard on it is torque steer. Oh my gosh. The front end gets all over the place. <laughs> it is wild feeling for yeah. sure. I'll insert a clip of Colton doing a launch earlier <laughs> and then you're just like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it definitely 
got moves. the moves. <laughs> <laughs> it floats. Yep, that torque steer, baby. Dang, brother. <laughs> Um, and what we'll do is we'll jump on the highway. We'll show everyone some super cruise action. We'll test the noise up there. So yeah, let's jump onto the highway and see how this thing does covering some distance. We're sort of on a little deserted road. Should we do a quick acceleration? Yeah. Okay. You're going to drop the suspension to entry? Yeah. So the best way to do it is to go entry exit. Make sure this mode is on. We'll go not vehicle off. We want traction control off. Boom. And we're just going to launch it here in three, two, one, foot down. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, felt way better there. Absolutely. This thing buggies, and the suspension should probably come up to normal now. Oh, I probably did. Maybe it did. It's at normal. But the best way to launch it is all the way down. So, yeah, pretty cool. Traction control back on. Everything is set up normally. The only thing we don't really need is this extra power. It feels like an extra 10%, 20% maybe, yeah. but this is not really a performance truck. You're not going to be ripping it around most of the time. And actually, when I put it in my mode, it, the power did feel slightly increased, so maybe this will give us a little bit more power anyway. Mm. So, yeah, got a couple corners up here. Let's see what 9,000 pounds feel like just to hustle through a couple corners. So. <laughs> <laughs> the leaning tower of Sierra EV, but dude, it's pretty stable. Like it's heavy. You can tell we're causing earthquakes and the, you know, the rotation of the earth to change, but it feels good. Like it's stable. They definitely like, it never feels stressed. No, they engineered this thing to handle all of the forces that go through it. Exactly. So the one thing we noted driving up here was we didn't love the torque steer on power. You can see this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's turning for you. Yeah, it's you know lane centering all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's just hit the throttle, it'll whoop. Um, so that was one thing we didn't like, and we didn't like the noise on the highway. Up here, it was good. So we're getting up to the speed limit, 74, 75 miles an hour, boom, lock it in super cruise, and now we're set. Nice. It's pretty quiet here, but what do you think in the back seat, Brandon? I'll give you, you've been able to sit in both seats, so I hand, I'll hand you this. It's kind of nice back here. I can definitely hear what you guys were hearing earlier. It feels a lot different than being in the front seat. But I mean, I got a ton of legroom back here, so. Yeah, like besides like the seats, they're kind of flat. But I mean, it, I guess. You're probably usually in the front seat anyway, but if I can go on a road trip in this, there's plenty of room. We could fit a few dogs back here, some bags. It's pretty nice. It is definitely quieter up here for yeah. sure. It's actually pretty quiet. This is like loud concrete. There's not yeah. much road noise coming no, in at all. Definitely not. And so I'm curious to see if Super Cruise will do an automatic pass. Yes, it just vibrated the left side of my seat and it's automatically initiating a lane change. Very smooth. Dude. Oh yeah. And this is get around like this and you can do this with a trailer it won't do the auto lane changes with a trailer i don't think but it will do you know this kind of stuff will it pop back into the right lane we'll have to run this in the hot back mm, sure It'll do pretty well i think because this is a big vehicle for super cruise and it has no issues wow very smooth yep and then yep right side of my seat just vibrated auto lane change back to the right for the driving lane awesome it is one of the best highway driving assistance systems as long as you are on a pre-mapped road, which most highways probably are. But I do wish I still had the ability to have like a hands-on decontented version of the system on non-pre-mapped roads. Mm -hmm. I use lane centering often and um, yeah, I just wish it would let me do some sort of lane centering when there's no mapping. So cruising, turn up the sound system, enjoy, you know, bombing around in this. Any uh, final thoughts, Colton? On what you think about this thing does on the highway yeah it feels really nice i mean so i have not driven silverado AV. i've been around it played with it a little bit this feels really nice though like feels pretty premium to me i mean some of the plastics in here i think are very typical gm not the greatest feeling things i would definitely say like you're going i have to have the nicest interior rivian makes the best interior between all of the electric trucks out of there um, but space-wise, it's incredible. It's a big, heavy rig, tons of battery. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It is It is the truck. If you want an electric yeah. truck, it's this or Silverado, and, and my impression is I, I prefer this. Yeah, I agree. I've always preferred the GMC stuff. 
just look a little, and it's only five grand more than an RST, and yeah. you get crab walk and a much nicer interior. Uh, the sound system feels the same as Silverado. Maybe it's slightly up a little bit, but it doesn't really feel up. It's a Bose system yeah. in here. Uh, that was one thing I really kind of hoped that, that this that this truck would have would have like a real juicy sound system, big subwoofer or something. Yeah, I don't feel like GMs ever really have the greatest sound systems. I mean, they typically use Bose, and I'm not yeah. really except for guy. the AKG and the Escalade. Yeah, yeah that's true. Stuff. Escalades do sound pretty good. Yeah, put that system in here. Yes. Or let's get a Escalade EXT. Gosh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. That would be really nice. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, I, literally, I see those like maybe once a year on the road still. Right. Automatic lane change coming again. And uh, yeah, freaking awesome. I think what we should do is we should swing by the Electrify America station, see yeah. if we can get some good power on this thing. Yeah, I'll sure. get it starting to precondition, and then we'll kind of give our final thoughts when we get over there. Man, I was mad that I looked away, but I can hit the lightning bolt. And I'll look for charging stations. EVgo, EVgo, Electrify America, that's the one we want. Hit start, boom, and now I've got navigation, super cruise information, preconditioning automatically. Awesome. Everything we could want happening right there. I gotta say one thing, I'm very impressed with the software in this actually. Like it's pretty snappy. I wouldn't say it's like as good as Tesla and Rivian, but it's I think anybody getting in here could very easily figure this out and it's not super confusing and complicated. Yeah, like we get in a lot of vehicles that's like I wouldn't buy it because of the software. I mean, in my half a mile, take exit 278 for call. So annoying to deal with software. Mm -hmm. So I just have, you know, CarPlay. I'm, I'm not a CarPlay guy, but that's all I use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just finding a charger like that, so easy compared to the EV9, EV6 that I have. Yeah, totally. And even, uh, you know, Lightning's got some cool features, but I just prefer this screen, this everything. Will it take the exit for us automatically? doesn't seem to so i'm going to take over the system <laughs> see how much regen we can get on the oh brakes my God, dude. <laughs> i did hit the brake pedal a little bit but we had almost 200 kilowatt regen there wow. and again the battery is at 61 percent and it's still cold so it can only get more regen from there anyway let's go charge this thing up and see how it does and that'll be sort of our first sierra ev experience welcome to the electrify america charging station before we plug in i want to apologize to the local utility grid because this is going to pull some big power ryan who does a lot of our 10 percent challenges says that this charger is the one he's been using to give full power we did precondition on the way over here it's not dead we've charged these things many times but it is just cool to see how fast they really can charge we're at quite high state of charge so i'm going to plug in the ccs port nax I don't know if it can come soon enough or not because most superchargers don't support high voltage yet. So you'll have to use an adapter to charge here. Let me open up my Electrify America thing. Tap to activate. And it's the, the, the latch didn't click, but it's still going. So don't trip on the cable because then it'll <laughs> safety. Max can come <laughs> faster, please. <laughs> Okay, come on in, let's look at the charging performance. 167 kilowatts at 54%, 197, 230, 260, 228, 217, that's not so good. 219, <laughs> come on baby. Anyway, when it's warm, it'll charge better. <laughs> if you actually give it some time to precondition. But uh, like Tom said, on this battery, he held 350 kilowatts to 50% which is wild. We tried to drain it, we ran out of time. So anyway, still 200 kilowatts, not bad. But yeah, no question it's a charging beast, Colton, don't you think? Beast. Yeah, not this particular session, but we don't know if this is charger or truck limitation. I mean, it's still doing uh, 200 kilowatts at 50%. Like yeah, so one C, that's like a Cybertruck doing 120 kilowatts. Yeah. So anyway, let's go return it. <laughs> Off. And the first thing, the first setting you have to turn off when you get this truck is this buckle to drive function. Because I just like to get in a truck and or get in a car and buckle as I'm pulling out. And it won't let you go into gear unless you're buckled. And it won't let you go into gear if there's someone in your passenger seat unbuckled. <laughs> it's like, they, who cares about their safety? <laughs> anyway, you can turn that off because that would infuriate me. Um, okay, Colton, final thoughts on the Sierra EV. We really didn't focus much on the driving component in this because it drives identically to Silverado EV, almost no difference. And we've done a full driving review with towing and everything. You can watch that. It feels identical, um, except I like the steering wheel better here. Um, your impression, Colton, on the Sierra, given the 
electric truck landscape, but also I think a lot of people are going to go for this who maybe are combustion truck owners. I think, you know, some people are like in my position where I'm thinking maybe I should get a diesel, mm -hmm. maybe I would get an electric truck. What, what's your impression on, on all of that? Yeah, I think it's a cool truck. I kind of think it checks a lot of the boxes. Uh, competition. Yes, please. <laughs> but I do think it checks a lot of the boxes. Very utilitarian. It's still a nice place to be. It's comfortable, has big range. You can tow with it. Air suspension. Like, I don't, what else do you really need in a truck here, Kyle? Dude, it's got everything. Yeah. It really has everything. It has great driver assistance on pre-mapped highways. It has a serviceable sound system. It has a nice interior. It's the the value is just unbelievable in this. It's a hundred grand, which is a lot of money for a vehicle, but just think about the battery capacity you're getting here and the charging performance you're getting here. It is a work truck in the sense that you can tow with this thing long distance. Now, I wish it had a front charging port instead of a rear charging port. A lot of my criticisms around Silverado EV carry over here, but one thing is for sure, they just threw a F ton of batteries into this truck and sent it. You know, nice interior, fairly okay ride. It's heavy, it drives heavy, it's got rear steer. Um, all, all of these things kind of come together to make a unique driving experience. I wish it had steer by wire, but it's almost not even worth nitpicking all the little things. I think I said this with the Silverado review. Like even if this thing, if this truck has some issues with it, which every vehicle does and this certainly does, there are no other electric pickup trucks on the market that can do what this does or Silverado. So it's, I think a, you should go to a, a Chevy dealer and you should go to a GMC dealer. And if you don't care about the styling differences, just see which one gives you a better deal. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I really felt the RST. I know I haven't driven that, but we saw it at an auto show. And the first thing I noticed, the interior was kind of a disappointment, especially for that expensive of a truck. Yeah, they use that like not so much fine grain leather. Like all of this is so much nicer in general. Totally agree. All your touch points in here and arguably the things you don't touch feel quite a bit nicer in my impression. Yeah, and you know, some people are looking for a truck that don't want any niceties. They just want a work truck, get a Silverado WT. Yeah, exactly. Get a max range work truck. Um, that was awesome. We loved that truck. It was amazing. But then if you want like, you know, a daily driver, a nice truck, I think this looks better than Silverado. For me, it's almost like mm -hmm. all the goodness of Silverado with a nicer exterior and interior and crab walk. I can't say no to that. Yeah. And I'm gonna go ask them to give me a value on my Rivian right now. <laughs> Not even joking. Wow. I, I really love this truck. So um, it's one of those things that just has the range, the charging, and it's freaking awesome. But if you, you know, if you're just buying it as a working vehicle, then get whichever one gives you the best deal between the Chevy and the GMC. The GMCs are brand new. I think they are going to be, they are not going to be discounting these nearly as much as Silverados. Silverados, I think they're, you know, they've been sitting on the lots for a while, especially the work trucks. So you could probably get a pretty good deal on one of those at the moment. We've had viewers reach out to us on some insane RST deals as well. Thousands of dollars off MSRP. I don't think it's worth spending 10 grand more for this over a Silverado RST. Probably not, unless you're like a GMC guy, which I think, you know, that's something we don't necessarily see. I guess we do with Tesla, but you are either Ford or Chevy or GMC or Dodge, of course, too. But they're very split when it comes to that. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people that are our viewers are kind of looking at this and the Chevy as, uh, you, you know, really the only electric vehicles that can work for them because of the battery capacity. Mm -hmm. And I think they don't care if it's a Chevy or GMC. At least that's kind of my view. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Be interesting to hear what you guys think about that. Yeah, so Brandon, final thoughts from you? Honestly, I really like the mid gate. Like, I can't get past that. It's really cool to see it all go down. You get so much more space. And if you get the little cover in the back, it's just like you have a giant fan. Totally. Well, uh, I think, you know, this is the king of EV trucks. It's certainly a step above Silverado. It's the best electric truck on the market for a truck. There are, you know, Cybertruck's faster, it's got FSD, it's got all this crazy cool stuff. This is a more useful vehicle in terms of if you're using it as a truck. And I love it. I really love it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I agree. Actually, I love this thing. That's cool. So, but I also, you know, would highly recommend any of our viewers to get one. I think they're just mega useful vehicles. Yeah, totally agree. And if you are gonna get one, get one from these guys who loaned it to us. So Loveland Buick GMC, 
uh, again, same folks that have the Fort Collins Kia and Nissan where we, we love working with them. They're great. And, uh, you know, they'll hook you up. They're not going to charge you over a sticker or anything. And they, we, we didn't even really talk to them. Um, we had the Kia guys reach out and say, oh, our, our YouTuber buddies wanted to borrow a truck. They're like, oh, hell yeah, do whatever you want with it. So range tests, charging tests, all these things. I just need this one to have more miles and we have no more time today. Yeah, But we are going to have like a General Motors electric month coming up. Everyone stay tuned because we're getting Equinox Blazer, Silverado RST, one of these, Prologue, and ZDX all coming in the next like four weeks. <laughs> That'll be fun. And I'm going to line them all up. Heck yeah. <laughs> Big Ultium comparison coming up. Anyway, let me park this next to my Rivian and uh, that'll be that. So let's use that 360 cam, crank her into the spot with that rear steer. Can we make it? What do you think? Uh, Easily, yeah. I think. I think yeah, you gotta no, absolutely can. Yeah, like you can. It's insane how much you can see the curve on the 360 cam right there. Dang. Damn! Damn! Can't believe we freaking made That's that. That's crazy. That's cool. And we'll back her on in. Oh, the Rivian looks small next to this thing, brother. <laughs> I'm looking down on the Rivian. Holy cow! Right Perfect. Thanks for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. Best electric truck on the market. Oh, <laughs>